Today we're going to expand on what you can make with your Glowforge by laser cutting your own custom made router templates. So there are a lot of advantages to creating your own router templates. With a router template, you can cut repeatable shapes out of any material without leaving a burnt edge. You could also cut thicker materials. You're not limited to cutting quarter inch stock. And with a little creativity, you can cut materials that are larger than the bed size of your laser cutter. Now before we get started, we need some materials to work with. You can use what you already have on hand, but I'm gonna be extra fancy. I'm gonna glue up some of these boards. For me, this is the fun part. Okay, so now we've got more than enough material to work with. For our first example, we're gonna create a router template that we can use to create rounded corners in this board. To do this, we're gonna fire up Adobe Illustrator and we're gonna draw a square. I decided to give each corner of my square a different radius, ranging from a quarter of an inch to an inch. This will allow me to reuse the same template on any project that calls for rounded corners in the future. Now that we've got that done, we're ready to cut our template out on the Glowforge. I'm going to use this quarter inch thick sheet of Baltic birch plywood, but you can also use MDF or even acrylic. So I just finished laser cutting our template. Now I'm going to trace a three quarter inch radius onto the board and cut most of the material off using the bandsaw. For this step, you want to cut as close to the line as possible without cutting into the line. All right, so now we're going to use some double-sided tape to apply our template to our board. So now we're ready to take this over to the router to trim off any excess material using a flush trim bit. There are two types of flush trim router bits that we can use for this. While the straight edge flush trim bit is more commonly used, I prefer using a compression bit. It's more expensive, but the compression bit often makes a cleaner cut with less tear out. It's also a little less picky about grain direction, but with that said, there's always a risk for kickback. So you want to keep your hands away from the bit and avoid cutting against the grain whenever possible. To trim off the excess material, I'm going to pivot my template on the starter pin and ride the template along the bearing, in this case, going from right to left against the bit's rotation. You should feel a slight but steady resistance during the entirety of the cut. The round of corners came out really good, but now we're gonna try something a little bit more complicated. We're gonna create a cheese board. This time, we're gonna use a router to cut out the entire outline. And then we're gonna try something a little different when cutting out the inside handles. So just like before, let's design our template, and then cut out our template using the Glowforge. And then we gotta trace our template onto our board, rough cut our shape on the bandsaw, apply the template, and then finally trim off any excess material using the router. Now let's tackle the inside handles. I've already traced out our shapes, however we can't access inside shapes with a bandsaw. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use some clamps, a drill, a jigsaw, and this palm router to finish up. First, let's clamp down our piece. You're going to want to use two clamps because one clamp just makes a pivot point. Next, we're going to want to drill two holes at each end using a Forstner bit. This will allow us to get in there with a the jigsaw to rough cut both of our handles. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're ready to use a palm or trim router to finish up these inside handles. And I'm actually gonna use the same bit as I used last time because this particular bit has two bearings. That means I can use it in a router table or this trim router. Now, if I was hogging out a lot of material, I might consider upgrading to a larger router, but because we're not, this one's gonna work just fine. So I just peeled off our router template, but I still wanna do one more thing before we move on to the next example. I wanna round over all of the edges using this round over bit. For our third example, what if we wanted to cut a shape that was larger than the bed size of our Glowforge? Well, in order to do that, we're gonna make two templates, then we're just gonna bring them together. After all, the final product's gonna be on this board. Nobody's ever gonna see these templates. Let's do that now. In our last example, we made something that was big, but now we're gonna try something a little bit more tricky and we're gonna make something that's small. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the handle on this paintbrush. Using my Glowforge, I decided to prototype three different handle designs. The first one looks a lot like your traditional paintbrush handle. So I decided to try something a little bit different, but I don't really like that one. So instead, I think I'm gonna go with this third option, which conforms to the shape of your hand. Let me go prep that now and I will see you at the router. So I'm ready to route out my paintbrush handle, but because of its size, my fingers are gonna be dangerously close to the bit. So some might suggest that I use push blocks, but that's really not any safer in this case. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a wood screw clamp that I attach to the piece so that while I'm routing, I can keep my fingers far away from the bit. This looks terrible. It came out really bad. It was a good idea, but it's not any good. So I think I should have stuck with that first option, but I have enough material here where I think I can retrace it, throw it back on the router, and maybe it'll come out a little bit better. Okay, much better. But I have to admit that cutting around that tight curve was a real challenge. Would have been a lot easier had I used my CNC machine, but that's another video for another day. So moving on, I'd like to transition now to our next example where we're gonna create a recess tray using this tray and bowl bit. Now this particular bit is designed to create a half inch recess. However, I only want my recess to be about a quarter of an inch or so. To make this work, I'm going to glue two identical laser cut router templates together, or maybe three if we wanna be extra safe. This will allow the bearing to ride a longer template, removing only a small amount of material on each pass. Before we carve directly into our tray, let me show you the process using a cross section of our material. This will give you a better sense of what we're actually trying to accomplish. First, I'm going to attach the plunge base to our router and clamp everything down. Now we are ready to plunge down into our material, making sure that we are only removing about an eighth of an inch with each pass. Now that we've got the hang of it, let's carve out our tray.
So we just finished our tray, it came out all right. Although in retrospect, I could have used the same technique to create an electric guitar body. Now that would have been really cool. Which leads me to my next example. Up until now, everything that we've done has been a flat 2D object. So this time, we're gonna try something that's a little bit more 3D. I'm gonna rat out these boards, I'm gonna glue them together, and we're gonna make a toy car. So before we wrap things up, I just want to show you that with a router template, you can route out a whole lot of different materials. Check this out. For our first example, this is three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Cuts beautifully with a router template. Next up, this is a piece of bamboo that I got from an old cutting board. Here, I've got a half inch thick piece of acrylic. Now you know normally the Glowforge can only cut up to a quarter of an inch. But with a router template, you can cut as thick as you want. But you'll notice that the edge quality on the acrylic isn't so great. So you can actually use a blowtorch and you lightly burn the edge and it will look like it was laser cut. You can also write out insulation foam from the home center. Really good for making things like props, but even better is this machinable foam. This stuff is a lot heavier, a lot more durable, but it's also a lot more expensive. And finally, my favorite, this is an epoxy pour made from branches in my backyard and total boat epoxy. So I think that's all I got for this one, but if you have any other questions about the Glowforge or woodworking or really anything else, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to help. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.